Hey everybody, Chris here. Just a quick note, this is part three, the final part of a three-part series, uh, talking to my good friend Angie Payne about pressure. Uh, if you have not yet, please go back and listen to parts one and two. Those are episodes 46 and 47. And if you have listened, but you have not yet gone to the website, powercompanyclimbing.com, to check out Angie's photos, you need to do that now. Go there, check those out. As a photographer, Angie also has this unique perspective of having been a successful competitor all the way from her childhood up until her adult years. And and you can really see that in her photos. You know, she knows where those stressful moments happen and she knows where the pressure is and she knows how to capture it. So, uh, particularly with this upcoming episode, there are some photos you're definitely going to want to see. Maybe don't know. A lot of internal dialogue, a lot of internal battles. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess climbing is, is that, but yeah, competition just takes that whole experience and condenses it down into a really short period of time. This time then I don't know I definitely can't relate to that I can't relate to that feeling of yeah, I can't either. of not thinking of my failures um I guess maybe when I was 19 or 20 I I was more that way like because I hadn't really had as many right um to think about especially like in that particular moment you know like in that year or whatever it was like mm-hmm. well they're they're really yeah I can't think of any because I've just been succeeding you know it's like and Mm -hmm. and it does you get this momentum going and that's what i you know i think you do feel that way on some level like no it's just all it's all good it's all positive i I don't remember the negative it's just rolls right off my back until like i definitely remember a a distinct moment um at at a spot comp and i had been you know mostly just doing boulder problems in these competitions and just with this confidence of like, I can do this boulder problem and then I will do it. Right. And um, I couldn't do the fourth problem in finals. And the crowd was totally behind me and they were so psyched and they were cheering me on. And right. Everything I just remember, was in your favor. And I remember looking work. at, like looking out at the crowd and just thinking to myself, I just can't do it, you guys. Like, <laughs> sorry, I just can't do it. Yeah. And feeling really like frustrated about like, right. No matter what, how hard you scream and no matter how hard I try, I'm not doing it. I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. just not doing it. And that was one of those moments of like, that I remember, like a moment of failure that I, to this day, remember that I'm frustration sure. of just like, oh, wait, it's not always going to be like this feeling of I'll walk up to the problem and know that I can do it and then do it, you know? Yeah. Like it's just not always going to be that way. And I, you know, I saw that with Petra um, when she was trying the dino problem in finals and she was asking the crowd to get behind her and they did hugely right right. you know and then she still didn't do the problem yeah and that's one of the things i actually think is really cool about climbing is that all those climbers out there in the audience know what that's like yeah exactly like to have everything going your way and still not do it and still not do it and climbing is is a is all about trying you know, yeah. it's all about trying as hard as you as can. As hard as you can, yeah. And and that's what we were stoked to see right. with Petra. Yeah, you know? people appreciate the effort. And that's kind of why, I, you know, it. it's just another example of like other people don't have these expectations for you. Like they just want you to try hard and they enjoy right. watching you try hard. Yep. And watching you enjoy trying hard, you know, that's what people love to see. Um, yeah, and when it goes yeah. well, it's great. Right. You know, we saw it with, Shauna, we saw it with Zhang Wan, right. you know, who obviously, I mean, the guy climbs with so much emotion and so yeah. much passion and was so stoked, yeah. you know. And so psyched on the getting the crowd involved. Yeah. 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 And it's, so it's amazing to see when that goes well. Yep. Exactly. And it's hard not to feel bad for the competitor when it doesn't go yeah. well because oh, you, yeah. you want them to, yeah. to do well. You're not, right. you know, as, as a, as a spectator, I'm not upset with the competitor right. for not doing it. I feel bad for them. Like, right. Like I you wanted, wanted to share so that moment with you. them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like you wanted, I mean, mm-hmm. that's just an amazing thing about sports is like, you want to have that 
moment of victory with the person, you know, right. like you want to feel like you were involved in it somehow and, and they want to do it. You know, it's like, everybody wants the same thing. We all want everybody to do well. Um, yeah. But I, and yeah, you feel like sad when it doesn't happen mm-hmm. for that person and that you couldn't be a part of it, you know? Yeah. And you feel nervous for them. You know, oh, there were, sure. there were moments, you know, where we're talking about Shauna and, you know, this idea that she, maybe she actually doesn't think about failures. And, but there were times during the comp that I felt nervous for her. Right. Like know? when she was about to time out on. Yeah. Th- yeah. And, and you almost have, do number one. Yeah. Yeah. And you have that photo of her obviously feeling pressure. You have several right. where she's obviously feeling pressure. It's not yeah. that she's immune to it somehow. Right. You know, there's, there's the moment where she's in the photo you have of her sitting down with her arms crossed and you know her head rested on her arms where you can see that she's trying to tap into something yeah for sure she knows that it's a pressurized situation she's tapping into something and then the the photo of yours that i really love of shauna is when she's turned around and looking at the clock right you know it's on her last attempt she knows it's her last attempt. She wants yeah. to know, do I have enough time to make this last move? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love yeah. those moments because um, I know what it feels like as a competitor. And um, I love seeing it from the other side now, too, because it's yeah. just like you do feel that pressure for the person. Yep. And you feel the <laughs> nerves that they must be feeling. And yeah, I think that's when the, the crowd like really connects with with things, totally. with those kinds of feelings. And I mean, even just... um. Oh, gosh, when people get super emotional, like you can feel that, you know, you yeah. feel their frustration of like, oh my gosh, that person is devastated. Yeah. And yeah. No matter what the emotion yeah. is, I think we all yeah. take it on yeah. a little bit, yeah. you know, whether it's Zhang Wan, who's emotional in a very positive way right, right. at that comp, right? you know, or it's Alexi, who you have this amazing oh, man. series of photos that, that I've looked at over and over because it shows this whole range of emotion yep. on a seasoned competitor who's obviously putting a lot of pressure on himself. Yep. Um, yeah, I love that. I mean, for me, those are the moments now that like looking through the cameras, those are the moments that I like to try to capture the most because I know what that feels like. You know, like he's just, he looks just devastated. Yeah, like, it's almost like stressful the worst to look thing. at these It is stressful. It's like the yeah. worst thing. God, somebody, you know, to feel that way, what could have happened to that person? Like right. if you just saw them out of context, like, oh my gosh, what happened? Did his dog die? Yeah. Did his, you know, it's just this utter devastation of like the worst thing just happened. It's totally. Like, well, he just fell off the top of the boulder problem. He, you know, fell matching the finish or whatever it was like, and that can feel super devastating in the mm-hmm. moment. And the crowd feels it too. Like, oh no. Yeah. I mean, I was standing pretty much right in front of him when he had this, this moment that you captured here. And, Annalisa and I were texting back and forth because she was at home watching. Yeah. And I got a text right after it was happening where she's like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, that guy was about to lose it. And yeah. I'm like, I think he did lose it. He like, did. He, yeah. For a moment, he definitely lost it. I mean, you can, you can very plainly see in these photos where there's, he's hit the ground, there's rage. You yep. know, he is, he is angry at, the entire world for yep, a minute. Yep. And then he goes very quickly into what did I just do? Yeah. Like my like, life is over. Yep, you know, that's exactly. how it looks. He looks yep. totally, totally dejected and yep. devastated. Yep. So, I mean, that amount of pressure, I don't even understand it, frankly. I don't, I don't know that I've ever put that amount of pressure on myself. Yeah. That, that's definitely the extreme I would say. Yeah. But, and I don't know how healthy that is. You know, we see, these people doing really well who are very, very happy. Right. Um, but I don't know where, you know, which came first, the the happiness or the, you know, the doing well. Right. You know, yeah, it's, I it's mean, so that's, hard to gosh, say. They're so, yeah, they're really hard to separate. Because I did talk to nah. people before who said, I just want to have fun. And then they right. did really well. But I also talked to people who said, I just want to have fun and didn't do very well. Right. And you then know? you want to ask them how much fun did they have? Right. Right. But I can't. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. And that's why I'll never be like this journalist, right. this, you know, hardcore journalist. Like when Ty, after uh, qualifiers, Ty didn't have the greatest qualifier round, even right. though he made it through. Right. You know, he wasn't pleased with his performance. Yep. 
And by not pleased, I mean he was very pissed off. Yeah, he was not happy. He came out outside of the barriers and was throwing things and Mm -hmm. laying on the ground. And it was just me and him. Yeah. And I'm like, if I were a real journalist, I would go go over right now now. and talk to him, you know. But I couldn't do it. Yeah. I had to let him go through that right go own. through his process yeah i mean he's really hard on himself um i can you, definitely relate yeah, you to that. said you and ty are similar i i think that we are in the in our in the way that we compete um he is just incredibly he, he's very hard on himself he puts a lot of pressure on himself um he's an incredible climber uh so much skill so much talent and expects a lot of himself and i have you know i can relate to that um, and I can also relate to how frustrated he gets when he doesn't perform as well as he thinks he could. And I, you know, I'm friends with Ty and I know, I know these things like as a, you know, as a friend, but also if you just watch him compete, you can tell these, you can, you can tell that like right. that he's putting a lot of pressure on oh, himself yeah. and he's yeah, it's, getting it's fairly really, obvious. really frustrated with himself when he doesn't perform well. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's pretty intense and I always like it when Ty does really well um because he is so talented and he's just as man so such a good climber such a good climber it's always a little painful to watch when he when he doesn't because i know how hard he is on himself yeah and that's always hard to see and you can see it in these photos that you've got and and we had a brief conversation with his mom oh yeah during qualifiers and i wish i would have talked to her yeah um but she was nervous for him. Oh, like, she gets so nervous yeah, for him. Yeah, and, so nervous. And it was it was really interesting to watch. And then in semis or finals, I guess it was semis. He wasn't in finals, right? Uh, right, yeah, it must have been in semis. Where he his knee was bleeding, his hand was oh, bleeding, man. and they so stopped him and made yeah. him tape it up, and he was furious. He was so mad. <laughs> you know? Oh, my gosh, he was so mad. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, just, it, you know, it, it broke my heart watching it. And then you see him accept it, and right. you can see in your photos where he's accepting it. He's yeah, not happy. No, not happy to accept it. But he's accepting it. Yeah. Uh, but that you know that changes your whole demeanor. That it does. I mean, that's yeah. like, man, it's just a perfect example of you just gotta like roll with the punches in these competitions, and that happens. That kind of stuff happens. And and actually, there's a photo of Akio um, sitting on the pads and. That's another example of that um, when the clock just stopped working, right? And everybody had to sit right. down in the middle of their attempts, yeah, and and just roll with it, you know, and just sit out there on the pads while they fix the clock, um, in front of the crowd, you know, like you're just sitting there and you've been trying a problem and you have to stop. Like somebody says, you have to stop. Now you have all that time to think about the problem, think about right. the fact that you haven't done it yet. Yep. If you're still out there on the pads, you haven't done it yet, yeah, and. Yeah, just stuff like little things like that happen in these competitions, and you just have to be able to adapt really, really quickly. Um, and and you just never know what it's going to be either. It could just be some little curveball, could be a big curveball, um, and you just have to to go with it. And that's yeah. pretty hard to do sometimes. Yep. And yeah, I didn't know that's where the photo of Akio was from. Yep. Yep. That it was while they were sitting there waiting for the clock to be fixed. And yeah. Now that you put that into context, I can see it on her face. Like she's, you know, it's a contrast for sure with the rest of the photos you have of her. Yep. Because she looks visibly frustrated. Yeah, because she's like stuck in the moment, I think, of like this intensity. You can't let it down. You can't, you know, you don't want to lose it. Um, Mm. You don't want to snap out of it. But it's hard to keep yourself in that place. Yeah. For an for an undetermined amount of time, because yeah. they didn't know how long it was going to take, you know. Yep. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think experience goes a long way to overcoming that frustration. You yeah. know, and I know that Ty's very experienced and Akio's very experienced, but you know, those things are just going to happen. You yeah. know, your routine, your this is how I wish it was, is going to get broken. Yeah. You know, and. And one person in particular that I'm thinking about was uh, Kata Sauervine. And her her experience really shines through that yeah. in that. And it's interesting. I heard her saying, I think I'm the only person who's been to Vail all 10 years. Yeah, she's been there a lot. You know, so 
he or she is the most experienced person there, at least at this specific comp right. and, and, you know, possibly overall. Right. And she looked unflappable. Yeah. Well, I think it's a lot about experience. I've done, been here like 10 times already, actually, and I try to just enjoy the comp and the fun and try the problems. And, you know, nothing can change my climbing, so it's just about me and what I do, and that, that's what I try to focus on. She's probably the one person I saw the least change in from how she competes to how she just hangs out when she's done. Yeah, yeah. She, I think the fluctuation in her emotion is, is very minimal. Um, which, which is really interesting to me. I, I do wonder how she, like, what's the secret? Have you, you know? climbed outside with her at I all? I have. She's an incredible outdoor climber. Is too. it the same outdoors? Uh, from what I've seen. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. She's like very level headed. I guess this is really, you know, she's just very even keeled. Um, she's really good at climbing outside. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's great competitor as well. Uh, I think that I'm even more impressed when I climb outside with her. Um, but yeah, she's just so, she just doesn't let it get to her. It's really cool. And it's been cool. Like she's, she's had a great year. I think it's this year so far. Um, but it's a good example of like, she just kind of goes with the flow of it. Like she knows right. that some of these competitions are going to be great. And she knows that some of them aren't going to be as great. She's going to have these ups and downs. And she just seems like she's really good at accepting that mm -hmm. and just carrying on and doing her thing and um yeah it's super cool that she's been there as long as she has because i mean i have a lot of respect for that because that's it's hard to come back that many times yeah um, for sure and you know as as the field changes as your climbing changes as your life changes like that's a it's cool it's a big accomplishment i think yeah no doubt and there's one photo you have um, that I, I think really speaks to her experience in, in kind of a strange way. And, you know, it's her mantling up onto this, this ball and, and she's pulling her, her foot up onto the ball, yep. you know, and I saw her do something similar where she was trying to rock over onto a foot and, and there was no right hand to pull herself over with. So she put her right hand on her knee and yeah. pushed on her knee until she was able to get her weight over. Right. And, you know, those two things in the heat of the moment, when there's all this pressure on you, those simple little things could very, very easily get lost. Right. And she was so calm and collected. Yep. And... And then she came off, she's standing there, and I'm watching her, Yorgas, you know, her husband is is competing, and I'm right. watching her watch him. Right, right, right. And she's wringing her hands, and she's getting nervous, you know? Yep. So as soon as he was off the mats, I walked over and said, you know, do you get more anxious watching other people, especially the people you care about or your teammates. Yeah, totally. It's always worse for me to watch other people climb. Actually, like it makes me so much more nervous than when I climb myself. And I wonder how much of that has to do with the fact that she doesn't feel the pressure because she knows Jorg is there, her teammates are there, whatever else. She's got all these people. Yeah, to back her, her up. up. Yeah. Well, it's always nice to have good friends or a husband with you, of course, yeah. yeah. It makes you, I don't know, it makes the whole travel nicer, the being here, and it's just always nice having people in the background while you're climbing. Yeah, I think that's that probably has a lot to do with it. And, I mean, just the experience, too, of doing it so many times. I think you, you get used to the pressure, at least, you know. Um, yeah. On some level, you get used to it. And... Yeah, I don't know. She she's just a great example of calm under pressure. Um, she's just really, really composed. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's really mm -hmm. composed. She's a resourceful climber. Um, she's yeah, she's she's a cool competitor that kind of flies under the radar. I don't think she gets a lot of um, or as much att attention as she deserves for her. Just like consistency. She's yeah. just consistent. Is she one of the older really competitors? Cool. Uh, at this point, probably. Yeah. 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 I mean, she's definitely been in it for a long time. Um, yeah. The first thing I noticed about her was everyone else, when they filter out 
of behind the wall when they're done competing, they sort of flit about nervously. Like, yeah, yeah. Like talking to a bunch of people and they're not really sure where to go. And she came out and just sat down on York's lap and hung out. Right. Like, okay, like, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. Like totally yeah. chill. Another totally day chill. at the office. Exactly. You know, yep. That's how it looked. And I didn't see anyone else react that way. You know, yeah. not even the people who were doing really well. Right. They were all still sort of nervously moving about. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, she's just, I don't know. She's got a really, really great head on her shoulders there with the the competition approach. Um, it is funny that she gets so nervous watching other people, but I totally get that because when you don't have control over it, I think it's more nerve wracking. Like when yeah. you, you can't control what that person's doing. Um, when you're out there yourself, you feel like you have a certain amount of control, but to watch other people is often that way. Yeah, I was, I was actually pretty excited to talk to Yoli Verm for that reason because uh, yeah, you know she she's was watching. She's been there as champion. Yep. yep. She was there as a coach this year. Yeah, which you know, is cool with the German team yep. and with with Jan. Right. So she's got all this pressure built up watching everyone else is what right. I guessed. Yeah. You know, but her response to that was pretty much well I don't exactly tell them anything I'm just try to be there if they need anything then I let them know they can ask me anything and stuff but yeah actually they are so experienced and they did so many comps already they know what to do and they know what to do to get in their zone and to climb well so. yeah and just having somebody there like that I'm sure I mean that does go a long way just to have people there that you know and that know you're climbing and know you and know how you're going to react and know what you need. Um, yeah, I also like, I don't know, it's cool though because she's she's obviously really experienced, but then when you asked her about... Um, about Well, what I asked her and most of the other competitors that I talked to as well was how if they have a tough boulder number one, do they get it all back together in that short window of time so that they can perform better on their next boulder. Well, that's actually mentally kind of the hardest thing that could happen to you in a comp, that the first boulder is easy, apparently, because you see all the others and uh, you didn't climb it. So, actually, I don't really have a good solution. I mean, I always try to convince myself mentally that it's not over and that I still could climb all the other problems, but then, I don't know, it's the hardest thing, I guess. There's not really a magic bullet. There's not, like, a secret right. that one person's figured out and the other person hasn't, and that's the truth of it. It's like everybody has their own approach, and sometimes you don't really have an approach. Like, there's yeah. going to be moments when you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get over this. Yeah. I don't know how to let this go. Was there anything you ever tried to tell yourself, like, Oh, Did everything. you have little mantras or? Um, you know? I tried all sorts of different things. Yeah, I mean, I would try to think about like something completely unre unrelated to the competition a lot of the time, like in between problems. I would think about like, what am I going to do after this? What's right. going to be dinner? What's What am I going to do tomorrow? You know, <laughs> yeah. like I tried that approach like sometimes, like, okay, What's I need to take dinner? my mind uh, away from here. Damn, I didn't do that last bowl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I try to take my mind away from it completely. Um, sometimes I just try to think about the next problem or, you know, because if you've previewed problems in the World Cup format, especially, you've previewed the finals, so and in nas our nationals finals format. Mm -hmm. So you can think about the next problem or right. try to think about nothing. I mean, I've probably tried just about everything that exists. I've never found one way that, that really like works every time. Yeah. I, and I, I don't think depends. any, I don't think many people had good answers, but this is what Alex Puccio, our 10 time bouldering national champion had to say. Um, I think everyone gets in their head like once in a while, especially if they can't get off the ground. And every athlete has like certain tricks or I guess like quotes or sayings or whatever they tell themselves in their head. So you always have this like internal dialogue and it's like, you know, trying to stay at a certain, not get too excited and not to get like, you know, too worked up about things and try to let things go. But everyone I'm pretty sure has the same feelings that pop into their head right away, especially like say you didn't do the first boulder and you're sitting in your chair and you're like, crap, I didn't do that boulder. Like is everyone else doing it? And you start thinking these things and then you tell yourself, okay, stop thinking that. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. You have former boulders to go, like, just have fun and just, you know, see how it ends up going for you. 
And Jan Hoyer, who is a 2015 European bouldering champion and five-time World Cup bouldering event winner. Um, well, not really. It's, I think everybody tries to focus at a problem at a time. And even if you can't do one, and, and of course you realize that other people did once you're in isolation, then it's, it's much harder to stay focused for the next one. But... I think I'm well. I think I'm doing kind of a good job at taking a problem at a time. I think some athletes struggle more and have a harder time, like staying concentrated if they don't do as well on the first couple. But today was tough. I couldn't do number two, number three. I did with two seconds left on the clock, so I'm really glad I did this one. Otherwise, I might have had a harder time on number four. And Janja Garnbrett, the 2016 lead world champion and two-time World Cup bouldering event winner. Well, I always, after a boulder, if I don't do well, I always try to relax and forget that boulder and focus on the next one. So uh, I'm just trying to relax and fully concentrate and try to top the next one. Because you never know till the end, you never know what can happen. So I try to stay focused. And Megan Martin, former youth sport climbing national champion and multi-time winner of both the Dark Horse and Dominion River Rock bouldering events. Um, so de I definitely try to like focus on not doing too many tries and like really step back and like assess the boulder a bit and see if I miss anything. Like I've definitely missed holds before and like silly stuff like that. So I have to like take a step back, breathe, and then just, you know, not stress out and like know that I can figure it out. Megan Mascarenas, two-time Vail World Cup winner, uh, defending champ going into this event, and former bouldering national champion, also youth continental champ in both lead and bouldering, had this to say. Um, it kind of comes from practice. The more comps I do, the more level-headed I can be going into the next climb. And finally, Sean Bailey, our top American male this year in 11th place, and 2016 sport national champion um yeah I, I think it's like it's tough to articulate because when you say it, it it's like so trivial most of the time right it's like you'll say stuff like oh it's okay you'll be fine and that's literally all i'm doing but if you say that to some like random person they're gonna be like thanks for the advice <laughs> but it really is that simple man like most of the time it just comes down to like taking a few deep breaths and kind of deciding that you're going to make it okay and it's all going to be all right. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's all going to be all right. So, yeah, you no, know, I think that's one of the interesting things. You know, like, I think, I think Lily's answer was probably Lily and Sean, I think said it the best, which I think again, speaks to that coaching we talked about. Yeah. But, yeah. They, the coaching is, but even the best competitors, their answers were more like, Oh, I just try to forget about it. Yeah. Well, you just know, try obviously to, try to leave it behind. Yeah. It's like, sometimes <clears> you succeed and sometimes you don't in, in trying, you know? So, yeah, it's it's fascinating. And, I mean, obviously, to like, I think everybody can relate to it. Anybody who's climbed can relate to it because climbing is pretty much about failing. And yeah. the whole struggle of it is learning how to deal with that and then move forward and move past it and then eventually, like, succeed only to find another thing that you can fail on and try to succeed on. Yeah. Like, and the I, cycle. I think it's interesting that these even these really experienced competitors – haven't really worked through all these mental issues, you know, right. or confidence issues or whatever. And I think we all sort of expect ourselves to be able to, yeah. um, but it was, it was actually really important for me to go there and talk to these super experienced climbers and these great climbers and realize that they don't necessarily have the answers, you know, they don't right. really know. You know. I talked to Jan Hoyer and he said something, that I thought was really interesting. He almost contradicted himself in back-to-back -back sentences when he said, Well, usually I enjoy starting early in semi-finals, so even if I qualify in 20th place for semis, I'm confident that I can get all the way through to finals and even win. So I think it doesn't bother me as much, but today I felt like I climbed super well, actually, but when I finished, I realized I'm in sixth place already and all the Japanese guys beat me, so... Well, they are obviously super strong, so... But then I realize I'm in sixth place and all the Japanese guys <laughs> right, beat me. Right, right, like he's bothered by it. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, but yeah. you just said a sentence ago that being in 20th place is fine because you're right. confident, you know? Yeah. So they, you know, they're battling with this all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of what competition is. It's just like um, a lot of internal dialogue, a lot of uh, internal battles, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess climbing is is that for for most people at least. But yeah, competition just takes that whole experience and condenses it down into a really short period of time. It makes it way more intense, I, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And you just go through the same exact process and the same exact uh, cycle, just in fast forward, basically. Yeah, um, that's a good. That's a really and, good way to put it. Yeah, and that's that's one of the. I think that's that's one of the coolest things when I really think about competitions is, it is just the same process um, that I really do enjoy about you know projecting Boulder problems. Competitions are the same thing. They're just in you know fast fast forward times four or times 10 or whatever. They're just a super fast version of that same thing. Right. So it's the same skill set. You just have to be able to do it. You have to add in the skill of being able to do it all really quickly. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really realize, you know, the, the amount at which that was a thing, you know, until I was there watching it and really trying to pay attention to that, you know, and I'm so glad that you had the idea of talking about, talking to the competitors about the pressure and how they handle that because it's something I hadn't really thought much about. I'm not a competitor. Right. You know, I've been to a lot of comps, but they're usually as MC. My job is to keep people stoked and hype right, everybody right. up and have a great time. Yeah. So I don't feel that pressure at all. You know, right. I don't see it. And and sometimes I might even make it worse. Right. You know, right. looking at it now, it's a good thing if Michaela falls on the last problem because I can get a crowd reaction. Yeah, right, you know? right. I can get people stoked over that, yeah, you know? Totally. And it's not that I'm downing the competitor at all. I would never do that. But I don't know how helpful that is to the competitor. Right. Well, you know? but it's just another aspect of the competition that you have to deal with right. as a competitor. Exactly. You know you're going to have to deal with it. Like exactly. you are part mm. of the the experience for the crowd and and you know that like your failure plays into that sometimes yeah and i've come to accept that like sure it's it's kind of annoying in the moment sometimes when when you hear that you know oh yeah that person fell now the next person has to do the problem to win and you're like oh man like just being reminded of your failure but that's part of the whole thing i mean it's a it's that's part of like the sports action of it all you know right right and, and it's part of the whole climbing as a whole not just competition right exactly know? like everybody can relate to the failure of it yep. um and i mean everybody can relate to the su- to the success as well but i think since most of climbing is falling and failing that's the part of it that i'm the most fascinated by yeah is how you deal with it like how do, how you get past it are there any things that you saw from competitors this year since you were looking at it from a different perspective or that you've seen in the past that you try to put into action that you try to apply whether it be comps or outdoors oh man there's so much that i try to yeah there's there's so much that i try to put into my own climbing um i'm always just blown away by people's ability to like flip the switch is what i always say like um killian and anna used to be yeah. Like the incredible examples of that, I thought. Like mm-hmm. they would have one more attempt on, you know, finals problem four to win the competition. And, and they were like able to pull it together. Nine out of 10 times they could do it. And right. I was always just blown away by that, <clears throat> that consistency mm-hmm. of being able to perform under pressure. And I mean, sure, I tried to put that into my climbing. Um, I don't know how much I succeeded, but I was always inspired by it and yeah. wanted to figure out, like, how do they do that? Yep. You know? And, I don't, I don't know. I still don't know how they did it. Um, I've done it sometimes, you know. I've performed relatively well under pressure, but I haven't found the secret either. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if there is one. Yeah, maybe that's, there's that's not one. That's the thing. You maybe know? that's like, what this is all about. There's, but there's no secret. It's you're going like to feel it, you know. Everybody has their own way. And, uh, and you can definitely learn little, you can get little tips here and there and mm-hmm. incorporate them into your own climbing for sure. But it's always going to be like your own approach, no matter how you do it. Like, yeah. It's going to be your own special combination of all the things. Yeah. Everything that you're dealing with. Well, I think yeah. that's as good as place as any to wrap this up. Yeah. You know, maybe there is no secret. Maybe no it's, secret. It's just something we continually deal with. And maybe that's part of why we love it. Um, you know? Steph, I think that's a huge part of why we love it. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, Ange. I really... Yeah 
really appreciate you. Yeah, it's been fun taking on this, you know, nebulous, yeah, impossible project. Oh, with thanks me. for inviting me. And it's that awesome it, that it came out like it has. So. Had a good time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. And thanks to you guys a ton for listening and for sticking with us for two hours of you know, discussing something that's really hard to pin down. You know, I uh, I learned a lot, frankly, from talking to these competitors and from talking to Angie and looking through her photos and discussing, you know, all of these things that we we saw and we heard. And I think it's pretty important to note that. You know, none of us have the exact answer. We all feel this pressure. You know, when you're stepping up to your next project, it doesn't matter if it's V2 or if it's V14, and you're feeling the pressure, and you're not alone. We all get it, you know? We all feel it. Um, some of us may even say that we don't, but... You know, the proof is right there in the photos. And if you haven't looked at those, go to powercompanyclimbing.com right now. Check out Angie's photos. Like I said, she's got a really unique perspective on what these competitors are dealing with. And I think the photos, you know, particularly the ones of Alexi, uh, the, the photos of the Japanese team, and the photos of Shauna, I think are incredible. So go check those out. And special thanks to my old friend Angie Payne for you know, not only for helping out with this project, but for just lending so much of her her creative energy to it. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. And you can you can see more of Angie's work and learn more about Angie over at AngiePayne.com. Um, you know, she's a Midwestern girl with a really unique eye, and I'm glad that she's started documenting her her travels and her life and her surroundings the way that she has and please if you enjoyed this episode definitely let us know over on facebook or instagram or on the blog or shoot us an email whatever you want to do please just let us know we'd love to continue exploring these ideas and and talking to climbers at other events and of course, you know, keep in mind that these things take time and money to produce and you know, you can help support us a little bit over at patreon.com slash power company podcast. You can get extra episodes, you can get t-shirts, training plans, all sorts of rewards for helping to support the podcast over there. And if you're on iTunes or if you're an Apple podcast user, please go in and leave us a rating and a review. Um, I'm told that it helps people find us. I don't know, but I would certainly appreciate it. I love reading what you guys have to say. And, um, you know, maybe the best way to help us out is to share us on the social medias, share Angie's photos from the blog, uh, share the, the podcast. You can, you can share us on the Facebooks. You can share us on the Instagrams. You can share us on the Twitters if you want. Uh, but you won't find us there because we don't tweet. We scream like eagles. Yeah.